we are in unit 10 of this course we are talking about algorithms for computation tree logic in module 1 and module 2 we have described the prerequisites for giving the final algorithm let us see the algorithm in this module we were looking at this problem given a transition system m and a ctl formula phi find all states of m that satisfy phi this is known as the ctl model checking problem in module one we saw that every ctl formula can be written using ex eu and eg it was called the existential normal form in module two we have given algorithms for model checking CTL formulas of this form EX, EU or EG. Now we will look at a generic algorithm for a CTL formula in existential normal form. So in module 2 it was considering EX of some simple atomic formula like P1, P1 and P2, P1 and not P2 and so on. However, The existential normal form also allows formulae like EX, EG, E of EG, P1 until EG, P2, things like this. So given a generic formula in CTL, ENF, how would you model check it? In other words, how would you find the states of the transition system that satisfy this formula? Let's start with an example. So this is a transition system and we have been given this CTL formula in ENF, EX, EG, P1 and P2. The first task would be to look at this innermost subformula P1 and P2. Let's first label the states that satisfy P1 and P2. These are the states that satisfy P1 and P2. S5 and S0 do not satisfy this. Let us now look at EG, P1 and P2. What was the algorithm for this? The first step labeled every state with EG, P1 and P2. In the next step, we remove EG, P1 and P2 in all states where P1 and P2 is not true. So look at the states. S0 does not satisfy P1 and P2. S5 does not satisfy P1 and P2. So first remove the label EG of P1 and P2 from these two states. Now, according to the algorithm, we keep looking at states and if every successor of that state does not have a label EG, P1 and P2, then we should remove the label from this state as well. So look at S7. The only successor is here and it does not have the label EG, P1 and P2. So we remove it from here. Look at S6. For the same reason, we remove the label from here as well. What about S1? S1 has a successor which is labeled EG of P1 and P2. So don't do anything. What about S2? It has a successor S3 which has this label. So we don't modify this. Now what about S4? It has a successor which is labeled with EG, P1 and P2. So we don't do anything to this as well. So if you look at this state, there exists a path where P1 and P2 is true always. Same for this state, this state and this state. Okay. So we are done with EG, P1 and P2. Let us now look at the final formula EX of this we know that if we have already labeled the states where this inner formula is true then we have an algorithm to find the states where ex of this inner formula is true call this inner formula phi so phi is labeled here 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 and here then what was the algorithm for ex doing it looked at some state 
and it will see if there exists a transition to a state where phi is true, then this state would be labeled with ex of phi, right? In that way, this state has a transition to a, to a state that satisfies eg p1 and p2. So ex eg p1 and p2 is true here. Similarly, look at this state. It has a transition to a state that satisfies eg p1 and p2. So this state satisfies ex eg p1 and p2. Similar for this, this and this. So all these states satisfy there exists a path such that the next state satisfies eg of p1 and p2. Essentially, we were doing this labeling algorithm hierarchically. We started with the smallest subformula, then we looked at this bigger formula, and then finally we looked at the entire formula. But by the time when we looked at the entire formula, we have already marked the states where this inner formula is true and then we made use of our existing algorithm for ex. Let's look at another example. Now we want to check if e of p1 until eg p2 is true. So there is a bracket here e of p1 until eg p2. Let's first look at eg p2 and mark the states of this transition system that satisfy eg p2. So the algorithm, how does it work? It first labels all states with eg p2 and then the first step removes the label eg p2 from all states that do not have p2. So they, they are this, this and this. Okay. Now, look at predecessors. Look at the predecessor of S1. All successors of this state do not satisfy EGP2 in the sense that the label has been removed. So we have to remove the label from here. Similarly, S5. All successors do not satisfy EGP2. So remove the label from here. The only state that remains is this. Look at its successor. Its successor is itself. So we cannot remove EGP2 from this state. Fine. Now let us look at E of P1 until EGP2. We had looked at an algorithm for E of Phi1 until Phi2. Here Phi2 has been labeled. We also know the labels for Phi1. Let's now apply the algorithm for E of Phi1 until Phi2. Okay, so this is the only state which satisfies EGP2. As a first step, mark E of P1 until EGP2 to be true here. Look at its predecessors. S3 is a predecessor. It satisfies P1. So this state also satisfies P1 until EGP2. There exists a path that satisfies P1 until EG P2. Look at its predecessor. It satisfies P1, so you need to label this state with E of P1 until EG P2 as well. Similarly, look at this predecessor. It satisfies P1, so you mark this state with E of P1 until EG P2. Look at S1's predecessor. This does not satisfy P1. So we do not change the status of this state. We do not mark EG, E of P1 until EG P2 for this state. And then the algorithm terminates because there is no change. Let's now write the final algorithm. The input is a transition system M with the set of states S. So it would be a transition system like this with some set of states. We denote the set of states with S. Along with it, a CTL formula in ENF is given. So here you have this as your input and the CTL formula in ENF. The output of this function should be the set 
of states which satisfy the CTL formula. So if you give this transition system, it should output S1, S2, S3 and S4. Let us see. So this would be a recursive procedure called SAT. There are cases. If the formula in consideration is just true, then all the states satisfy true. So the function should return S. If phi is pi, that is, it is something like p1 or just p2, then the function should return the set of states that contain pi. For example, here, if the formula was just p1, then the function should return s1, s2, s3. If phi is phi1 and phi2, then run the function on phi1, run the function of phi2 and then take the intersection. Sat of phi1 will give the set of states that satisfy phi1. Sat of phi2 will give the set of states that satisfy phi2. And now we need the intersection of these two. See, if you see, we are building up using the syntax of ENF. What was the next one? Phi is not of phi1. If phi is of this form, then run sat on phi1. All states that remain in the sense, all states that do not satisfy phi1 is what we want. So return s minus sat of phi1. s is the set of states. Sat of phi1 is the set of states satisfying phi1. Now comes ex. If phi is of the form ex of phi1, then run the procedure that we saw in module 2. You first label the states where phi1 is true and then mark the states where there exists a successor labeled phi1. We denote this algorithm by sat ex of phi1. If phi is e of phi1 until phi2, then label phi1, label phi2, that is run sat on phi1, run sat on phi2 and then recall the algorithm for e of phi1 until phi2 as seen in module 2. This procedure is denoted using sat eu of phi1, comma phi2. Finally, if phi is e g phi 1, then run sat over phi 1 and then use the procedure that we saw in module 2, where you first label all states with e g phi 1 and then keep removing repeatedly until there is no change. This procedure is denoted as sat e g phi 1. This is the final algorithm. Given a CTL formula and a transition system, this function returns the set of states of the transition system which satisfy the CTL formula. So the reference to this algorithm is the book Logic and Computer Science by Huth and Ryan. This is in section 3.6.1. In this book, you can also get the pseudocode for SATEX, SATEU and SATEG. This completes the discussion about the algorithm for CTL.